Hi, I'm Daz, and today on the bench is a Fidelity HF42 phonograph record player. There we go. This is from who? 70s, mid 70s. I think it's probably more like 76, 77, but I'm not sure at the moment. Um, my uh, sister had one of these, um, so I remember one of these being in the household, but I can't remember what colour it was. I don't think it was a red one. It's just a simple record player, um, no automatic at all, completely manual, four speed, and an integrated amplifier. I think I would suggest that this is probably aimed at the sort of kiddie end of the market or a young person for playing records. Here's the speed selector with a neutral position so it retracts the uh, rubber idler wheel so you don't get a dink in it. Small loudspeaker, there's an off on volume and a tone control. Looking carefully underneath there is a place to store the cable, a small little uh, clip there. Interestingly, it shows a position for six batteries, so I wonder if they made a battery version of this one. And uh, there is actually a position for a 13 amp plug, quite amazingly. Well, I've bought it up um, gradually on the Variac. There is some life there pots are a bit dirty. The motor sounds exceedingly noisy. So three speeds on this, no 16. But it has got a 78. Sounds very very noisy indeed but at least it's actually got some life. So uh, let's have a look inside and uh, see how it's built. Well how simple could you get really? So we've got a synchronous motor, an induction motor. It's got an overwind on it, so it acts like a motor and a transformer. That goes to the small circuit board here, which is just a rectifier, a single IC and a smoothing capacitor. The arm is connected to here. There's the tone and volume on off, just a simple switch and a simple loudspeaker which is 8 ohms in impedance. Could be a date code on here, I think it might be 76, but this capacitor says 7408, so it's, it's difficult to tell, so maybe it is around 75. Um, relatively simple to service, I reckon. You've just got to uh, clean up this mechanism here, which um, moves the uh, idler wheel up and down, because it looks quite dry and sticky. It did feel a little bit difficult when I first used it, and there's the ubiquitous dead fly. Um, so uh, yeah, this looks uh, quite easy to work on, unlike a BSR auto changer. Um, rubber mount feels reasonably good. Motor will probably need lubricating as well because it sounded a little dry. Start with removing the 45 adapter, and I'm going to be very, very careful. The last time I removed one of these, I broke it. Ooh. Oh, thankfully, it's come off in one bit. Let's take this clip off. Be neutral, so the wheel should be out of the way. Oh, there we go. Very, very simple, isn't it? Here's the mounting for the motor. There's the uh, idler. I suspected this is a BSR deck. There's some technical information there. Model M100. Right, so I can now release the clips, get the motor out and work on that first. I think that's where I'll start. Well here's the motor itself. I'll just remove these washers before they fall off and get lost. There we go. So here's the motor itself, quite a small motor. What I normally do is put mark on the motor so I can identify which way round it goes just in case I forget. 
we'll take a photograph of it nothing spectacular about these you've got these copper bits here which I believe cause a phase shift if I've got my facts right and that phase shift means you've got at least two poles which then makes this uh, armature around here a well, rotor sorry rotor spin round under the influence of the magnetic field the transformer just works as a normal transformer does these are the laminations basically so I'm just gonna take the rotor out and give it a clean up and lubricant here's the rotor and you can see that it's got some bits drilled out of it no doubt for balancing I'm just gonna clean up the shaft and uh, this top bit looks quite worn it's got rubber on it sometimes these have a little bit of felt in that wicks up the lubricant sometimes they don't um, you usually find out if you put a little bit of lubricant in and it pours out the bottom it hasn't but uh, I forgot to mention the reason I mark this is because if you assemble it the wrong way around you end up with the motor going backwards which is not very funny okay a little bit of IPA to clean it up and uh, a bit of sewing machine oil I'm now back together <laughs> I managed to rub the mark off but I knew which way it went anyway um, I suppose to look at the uh, idler wheel next and the speed change mechanism give that a clean up I guess next well I've got the idler off and the uh, washers interestingly look at this mountain here I think it's um, possible for a DC motor to go in there so I reckon that's how they made it battery I reckon a cassette type motor went in there I wonder if it was still rim drive I imagine so or could it have been belt drive is is it possible to... no it's inside isn't it so I reckon it would have had a shaft similar to uh, what was on the uh, mains motor. Anyway, I'm just going to clean up the shaft and the wheel, etc. Probably have to redo it when I've finished as well because um, you ever, ever, in, inevitably touch things with oily fingers. Just uh, putting a little bit of uh, plastic compatible grease on these little steps here. Um, so that when you change the speed change it'll be a little bit more uh, well a bit less clanky than it was um, but uh, that's about all I've got to do I think mechanically apart from cleaning the bearing out on the uh, motor right, let's see if that's uh, a little better as it gets in oh yeah that's feeling a little bit better already yeah just what need just a little bit of lubricant just to aid it yeah quite a bit of dirty old grease down there so uh, I'm just gonna clean this shaft up now and uh, put the record player back together once I've cleaned the uh, two drives and of course the insider here as well because that grips onto there so that needs to be nice and clean then I'm going to play with the electronics next I think it's a bit easy to clean the motor when it's running so here you go here is the idler wheel in contact you can see it's in the thickest part you can see it's going quite old speed there if I put it on 33 you can see it's touching a much narrower part and the wheel is going slower it might be difficult because I'm only doing 25 frames a second but uh, it is going slower because it's on a, a smaller uh, diameter shaft so that's basically how the speed change is done on these and that's the neutral position actually think it'd be easy for me to put the little drop of oil on top of this bit rather than try and drop it down the inside of the turntable but I have cleaned the bearing so hopefully yeah, I've got it in neutral haven't I just got to push the, I have got to push it, I'm not going to use my fingers because I don't want grease over it. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's only a plastic turntable so, you know, it's not going to have a, not, a lot of inertia is it? Well, after unsoldering the cartridge wires the circuit board just comes off. And there's the board, speak and ease the dust. I thought I might take that out just because sometimes these things get dusty and it causes a rattle. 
Okay, so I've recapped it. Only three electrolytics to change. Nice and simple. These have all altered value. This is supposed to be a 300 microfarad. The ESR is not bad, but it's risen to 500. So it's either leaky or just shifted. This is a 2.2. ESR not too bad, but capacitance, you know, they're a good 50% high, so they seem to change with age, so, so it's not always leakage. The ESR is quite low on that. But let's try the new one and just compare it. That was 0 0.28, 0 0.08, that's a very low ESR, but then modern capacitors would be better. And I don't expect for a minute that these components were particularly... Um, high, um, expensive components, you know, this is a, a built to a price uh, record player, you know, it is a kiddies record player, it is um, a low cost unit, Fidelity made low cost units. I've just traced out the circuit, I think I've got it right, and the values of the capacity. The interesting thing is, is they are resistors, but they are capacitors. I think they're designed for machine insertion, I'm pretty certain. Uh, the supply voltage is 11.7 .7 with the TAA611, that makes about 1.4 watts output. Looking at the uh, circuit here, very interesting, you've got a 1 mega ohm resistor and a 100 puff in parallel with it in series with the cartridge. So the cartridge will see the correct load because often I think modern equipment doesn't load the cartridge with a high enough impedance, so this certainly does. There's your tone control, there's your volume, straight into the IC, a few components around it, and that's about it really. It's, you know, nothing special. Uh, this IC did come out in 1970, so it was quite an old one when this was made, although we think this is a 1974 unit from the uh, writing on this capacitor. Yeah, 7408, so... That's, I do believe that's right. Anyway, so there you are. That's the basic circuit. Of course, the uh, mains, is de the power is derived from the overwind on the transformer, so it must be quite a low voltage one, around about eight volts. Um, and there's a thousand microfarad smoothing capacitor there. Okay, so that's uh, all ready to go back together now. I've tidied the cable up. I think there was some tape around it, and that's come apart in the years. So, yep, yeah, let's get this back together and give it a try out. Another little problem to solve is the tone arm. It isn't actually designed to be removed, but I've had no choice because what's happened is the plastic has melted and uh, now means that uh, the arm sits at a very, very strange angle. You can see the way it's moved. What seems to have happened is this is the rubber grommet that uh, gives some suspension to the tone arm and it's basically reacted with the plastic as you can see. You can see where the plastic has melted and this has become uneven. My mistake, should have checked this before I even started working on this record player. But uh, there you go, hindsight's a wonderful thing. Just an idea, it might stop migration if I put this copper foil between the parts. Okay, now gluing the arm back on. Well, the bottom little bit anyway, and uh, hopefully uh, that'll uh, solve our problems. It looks a lot more level now. I've spent a while um, leveling the plastic out, put that metal round the rubber to try and stop the migration any further, um, and we'll see how that works. No auto return on this. Well, at least I've got it playing. I know the um, arm probably needs further attention because of this plastic problem, but uh, hey, at least it's uh, working. A good bit of practice for me, um, repairing record players again. It's something I haven't really looked at for years and years and years, so it's a bit of fun just starting with this one. 
which is uh, quite a simple mechanism and, uh, you know, it reminds you of the Crosleys of today, doesn't it, really? That's sort of what it's like. OK, thanks for watching. Um, Kiddies record player, a bit different, I know. Not exactly hi-fi, but, you know, I like to do lots of different things and this brings back memories from when I was younger, so uh, there you go. I guess that's OK then. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you very soon and take care.